G'day guys and welcome back to my lab and to this our ninth installment in our Super Bogan Brothers Godot 4 platformer tutorial series. What we're going to get up to in this particular lesson is we're going to add a new level to transition to and handle all the transitions and everything associated with that. So let's have a look at our WWSS and then we will go through the steps you need to complete to add another level and transition to that level. Let's do a quick play test so we remember where we are up to with all of this. So we'll hit play and then we should have our coin sounds, which we do. Fantastic. We can jump. We've got a pit we can die in. Excellent. So that's where we left it off at the end of our last lesson. What we want to do for this one is make it so that when we get to the end of this level, we can jump on that flag pole like in Mario and that'll just take us straight through to the next level. We're not going to add in the castle and the, the tubes that you trend, like the flower pots you transition through and all that. That would take us quite a long time uh, and the scope of this is quite small. So we're just going to focus on the main features. So I think the first thing we might do is bring in some of those new assets. So uh, if you're on OneNote, have a look uh, down below and you should find the assets you need for this lesson. If you're doing this from home, you can find them at itch.io or the GitHub link, um, or you can use your own assets. It's completely up to you. So what I have got is I'm going to drag in, uh, I've got a flagpole here, which I'm going to drag in. Um, and this flagpole is just going to basically symbolize where we finish, right? So let's just scroll down to the end here. Let's go to our tile map and we're going to create a new tile set down here. So we do that just by finding that flagpole and dragging it into our tiles here. And then it's going to say, do you want to automatically create tiles in the Atlas? The answer is no, we don't want to do that this time. And I'll show you why. We've hit no, normally we hit yes. But let's just make a bit more space here. Here is our flagpole and it's, none of it's highlighted because we said no to that question. But if we click on our top one here, then that's with setup selected. Now we're going to select select. Um, come back over to that rectangle we just clicked on, click on it again, and now you've got all these dots around it. We're going, I'm going to make this bigger so people can actually see what I'm doing. Um, and then you can just grab that one there, drag it down. And what we've now done is we've made one big sprite, right? So it's not just the 16 by 16, it's all of these ones as well. So that's all one complete sprite now. Um, but we're also going to want to give that a physics layer because we don't want to be able to um, easily just like walk over it or whatever, you know, like um, we want the block to still be a block. Gosh, I can't fit half of what I want on here. There it is. All right, so we just want to add our um, collision shape to our block here just to make sure that we don't just walk through it. That a bit wrong. Let's try and fix it up. All right, that one there needs to move, and that one there needs to move. Cool. That is that done. So let's now go back to our uh, 2D view. Oh, hang on, we're on our 2D view. I've just hidden it. Let's scroll that down. What I think we should do now is go to our tile map, grab that flagpole we just made, and we're just going to drop it in here. Now I've got our flagpole. That's going to be our end point basically. But what we can do now is. Um, if you remember when we were working with our players um, and also on this map here, we had this interact level, which, uh, sorry, interact area 2D, and we were using that for uh, dying when we fall down our pit. We're going to do something very similar to trigger going to the next level. So we want to um, come back up to our world. We're going to click on the plus and we want to add an area 2D. This area 2D we're just going to call transition. And that area 2D has a warning because it needs a collision shape. So we also add a collision shape as a child of that area 2D. We go and find it up here, drag it down to here. All right, now we need to give it a collision shape, a circle, there we go. So what we're gonna do is just um, create it like that. So when our player hits our circle um, on the bottom of the flagpole, that's going to transition. So to set that up, we need to also signal that to our script, if you recall. So with our transition area 2D selected, come across to our node list in the right hand side and find body entered. And we're going to signal body entered through. And there it is there. So on transition body entered body. Let's write this code now um, so we don't forget about it. We don't want to pass. What we actually want to do is we want to check um, if body um, dot is in 
group player, just like we did before, right? So that's exactly the same as what we got above on the interact thing, but we're not gonna do body die. We're actually gonna to transition to a new level. <coughs> Excuse me, let me just pause whilst I cough. Okay, sorry about that. So what we're gonna do here is I'm just gonna hit pass for now, because we are going to need to put something in here that takes us to our new level, but we haven't made that level yet. So right now, when we enter that spot, we're just gonna pass. So let's save that. Now we need to set up our new scene, complete new scene. So let's come up to the top and click on the plus sign. Um, and then we're gonna click on 2D scene. So we've now got a node 2D as our route, but we wanna change that to um, underworld, I think, just to differentiate between the two. So that now needs a tile map as well. So we're gonna add a tile map to it. And this is where we're gonna add in those uh, extra blocks that we have available as our assets this time. So we've got the different colored blocks for the underworld and the overworld, just like in Super Mario Brothers. And that means we're also gonna need to change our background color. <clears throat> so let's just uh, take stock of where we're at now. Let's go to our 2D view. So this is what it looks like at the moment. So if you remember, in our last uh, scene, we set a default background color. So we had that nice Mario above world blue, but that's now gonna be a problem in our below world scene. Now the thing is we can't just change it for this scene using the same method because the method we use changes it for every um, level in the game but we can sort of do a little fix so whenever we have a world that's going to have a different background color we can just throw in a color rect to do that for us so i'll show you how we do that so um, we're going to go to our underworld we're going to click plus and we're going to search for color rect hit enter on that and then we need this to be pretty big um, if you recall our first level was something like you know 500 by 1500 or something like that in terms of pixels so let's just highlight that whole thing for our color rect and then let's give it a color so i'm going to go back to our inspector window where we've got color over here under color rect we're going to click on that white we want to find like a really dark um probably even darker because remember it's um underground now in the actual mario one i'm pretty sure it's black um, but I think we'll just go something quite dark for ours. So there we go. So I think that will work. We also need to think about things like ordering and stuff like that. So we don't actually want this to be the top thing. So let's just put it back one like that. All right, so that's our color rect done. That is our underworld sort of basic scene set up. So let's work on our tile map now. So we're gonna go to our tile map. So far we don't have anything, so we need to go over to our inspector window under tile map and tile set where it says empty. We're going to click on that, we're going to click new tile set, and then we'll just click on that again to bring up our tile set at the bottom. Now we need to drag in those uh, other assets that we had. So we've dragged our, our um, flagpole in. We also need to find and drag in two other things, level two brick and level two block. So I'm just going to drag those in there like that. <clears throat> sorry into there and then I can drag them over into the um, tiles part so we do one yes we can do automatic for that one and two yes we can do automatic for that one because at the end of the day uh, these ones are just single um, single squares right but we still need to do our physics stuff so if you recall from the first level one of the things we had to do on that tile map um, was actually go to our physics layers and add an element. And that now means we can have some physics with these things. So if we come back to our um, brick like this one, for example, and we click on it, we should now be able to go down to the bottom and add to our physics layer. So we wanna create um, the usual collision shapes on this so that we don't fall through the floor or walk through walls. That's that one done. Click on the next one, click on it here, do the same. Just like that. So now we've got um, floors and walls that we shouldn't fall through, right? That is a good start. Okay, so let's put some of those down. So let's just make some room here. Let's click onto tile map instead of tile set. We're gonna use this brick one for our floor and I always like to use the straight line tool just to make sure that we don't um, do it all wonky. So that just gives us some bricks on the bottom. Now we can just add in some blocks just to um, make it slightly more interesting. some of these so we've got some pits and things going on all right i'm just going to leave it like that for now because i can spend too long doing this stuff so now we've got our uh, entry into this one set up as well as um, the ability for um, us well so that we don't fall through the floor and that sort of stuff too so 
What we still need to do is go back into our first level, if you recall, and set up that uh, transition, that area 2D. So we've set it up, but we're not telling it to do anything yet. Now that we've created this and we've saved it as Underworld, we can go into that original um, script that we were playing in and give the path that we need to follow in order to get to this particular scene. So what you'll need to do is um, up to your script um, up the top. Sorry, we need our uh, world selected, not our underworld. So go to our world um, and to our script. So our world GD. And then this pass is what we're going to change. So we're going to change it from pass to get tree, change scene to file, and then the path of our um, scene. If you've been trying to be organized and put everything in folders over here, that would need to be reflected here, okay? But essentially what we're doing here is we're just saying if um, the thing that enters this area is a player, then we want to move the player to that other scene. But as it is now, it won't actually work, right? Because we haven't put our player into that scene. So let's save our world script. Let's go back to our underworld, go to our 2D view again, and then we need to add our player to it. So we find our player scene, and we just drag our player scene into the world and let it go. So we now have our player in the world, but that's not enough. If you recall from our first one, we need to put our player as a child of the tile map. And then our player, we click on our player node here, we click on the plus and we add a camera 2D to our player node so that it's gonna follow. Then we come over to this side and we start doing some changes. So in our first world, we said we wanted this to be three as our zoom and our limit, because we don't want the camera to go somewhere where we can't go, we're gonna have it at about 1500 uh, on the right because I can see here, actually we can go a bit further than that, can't we? Probably like 1550 or something. And our bottom, it looks like we can go down to about yeah, 650, there we go, so 650. Okay, we are getting close. So what we would probably wanna do in here, but I'm not gonna do this on camera, this is the sort of thing you can do in your own time. We're gonna to wanna to add that area 2D so that we die when we fall through the pits again. We're gonna to wanna to add in those toad sprites. You might want to, I've made available a toad that's got slightly different coloring, so it sort of matches that color change that we get underworld. You might wanna grab that from itch um, and put that one in there. But essentially, I think we've got to the point we needed to get to today to have our new level. So let's save what we've got and let's play our game and see if it works. So far, so good. Actually, you know what? I've got our, um, I've designed my world so terribly, I doubt I can even um, successfully pass it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go back to our scripts and to our player script. I'm just gonna boost my jump velocity just so I can actually get around. Let's, let's play it with that. There we go, that's a bit better. So, um, oh, good, looks like I can die still, that's, that's handy. Uh, and there we go it works takes us to the next scene the camera is set up correctly um, the only thing is if I fall down here we won't die we'll probably fall for infinity so that's something that you'll need to do in your own time but we're there so let's have a look at our uh, must may might and go through all of that because we are done with our demonstration for today Next time, it's all about a new level and how to transition between the levels.